we are studying potentiometers, AC potentiometers particularly and the important issue about uh, AC potentiometer is that the phase angle of the unknown source matters. Okay. So, we have seen how to take care of this phase angle using a polar potentiometer and we are going to see another type of potentiometer which is coordinate potentiometer with which we can again me, uh, measure unknown AC voltages with arbitrary phase angle. Before we come to this, uh, let me motivate you by saying that an AC voltage can be represented as a complex phasor that you know, a complex number. Okay. Now, a complex number can be represented in two forms. One is A plus I B, another is R angle theta or this is magnitude and the angle. Okay. So, we can represent a complex number in two forms. The polar potentiometer measures the unknown voltage in this form magnitude and phase angle. The phase angle is read from the dial of the phase shifter and the magnitude from the length at which the null point is obtained. So, this, this, this is the motivation or this representation is the motivation be behind polar potentiometer because this is also called polar form of uh, polar representation of a complex number. And this is this is the motivation of today's topic coordinate potentiometer. So, today the potentiometer that we will see will measure the unknown voltage in this form A plus I P. Okay. So, basically we need two potentiometers one to measure the real part of a complex voltage, another to measure the imaginary part so to say. So, we need two potentiometers. So, let me draw them like this. this is one potentiometer wire and this is another potentiometer wire. Now, the way we will uh, do it is this. So, we will supply to, to I mean we will apply two voltages of course, two AC voltages in a w one here another here in a way so that this two currents okay, say this current and this current call it I 1 and I 2 they are at 90 degrees phase angle. Okay. So, I mean this is not what I am drawing now is not the complete picture, but just to motivate you for now. Let me have just two voltage sources.
such uh, 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 such that the two currents are 90 degree out of phase okay so we have to somehow so somehow we have to ensure i1 and i2 are 90 degree out of phase and of equal magnitude okay so then it will actually mean that okay so these two are identical uh, potentiometer wires so the length of this and the length of this may be uh, are same their full uh, their uh, resistance per uh, unit length may be same so if we can adjust i1 and i2 to have 90 degree phase angle then we can ensure that the voltage drop in this wire and this wire they are also 90 degree out of phase and the voltage drop per unit length will also be same okay so this will actually ensure okay let me write it directly so we have to ensure that uh, voltage call this voltage v1 and this v2 lengths are same the potential the potentiometers have same length so let's ensure that v1 and v2 are 90 degree out of phase and uh, and with equal magnitude for that basically you have to adjust this i1 and i2 somehow you have to adjust this this here and here to make i1 and i2 such that v1 and v2 90 degree out of phase and of equal magnitude okay now let me have the unknown source so the unknown source is here vx x means unknown and what we will do is we will connect two jockeys like this one uh, okay, through a galvanometer one here another here okay and let me sort these two terminals okay so these two terminals are sorted you can take this point as the reference for calculation this is the reference point okay so now we have to adjust this and this during the measurement to get a null in this galvanometer so during measurement we have to adjust both call this uh, j1 jockey 1 and j2 we have to adjust j1 and j2 together to get null here in this galvanometer so that means no current should flow through this when is that possible that is possible only if only if uh, this in this circuit the voltage total voltage is zero okay now if this let me call this voltage from here to here from this reference point up to this this side call this v uh, v l and call this voltage as v r then what can we say 
okay and the reference direct so this is zero side so vr is measured like this vl is measured like this vl is measured with respect to this point vr is also measured with respect to this point so then we can say and vx let me take the reference of vx like this for example okay so then we can write K applying KVL starting from here. So we have VR. Okay, so this is KVL. VR then minus VX and then minus VL. This is equal to 0. Right? VR rise, VX drop, VL drop. So vr minus vx minus vl equal to 0. So, then this implies vx is equal to vr minus vl. Okay, vr minus vl. Now, what is vl? vl will be, so if this length is capital L, here also it is capital L and this length from so here to so here to here this length call it l l l for left and here length right left and right potentiometer okay so then we can write this as so, Vr will be equal to V2 divided by L multiplied by Lr minus Vl is V1 divided by L multiplied by L, L left. So, this is the unknown voltage. And now, we have made sure that V1 is out of phase with V2 by an angle 90 degree. So, we may write that say V2 is equal to I V1 plus or minus. Okay? So, there will be a plus or minus. So, plus minus sign we have to some uh, somehow decide. So, let me just put this note, we will think about it later. Okay. So, if we know this value, if it is plus or minus, then this i is root over minus 1, complex i. Then we can write this as here uh, v 1 by L this is v1 v1 by l l r multiplied by i minus v1 by l l l so this is vx okay so you see we are getting the unknown voltage vx in this form a plus ib where this is a okay v1 this is A, this is B. So, this is how, this is the principle of this coordinate potentiometer. This is the basic principle. Okay? So, you must understand this much before we proceed further and, and, and talk about more details like uh, how to get these two currents, these two voltages 90 degree out of phase how to ensure that yes they are exactly 90 degree out of phase their magnitudes are same so we will talk about this but before that you may take a pause and make sure that you have understood up to this if you have understood then let us proceed and ask how to ensure or how to obtain
or ensured that magnitude of v1 is same as the magnitude of v2 and the angle between v1 and v2 is 90 degree. So, this is the question. Okay. So, what we will do is this. just like we did it for the polar potentiometer, we will take a source and supply this side and this side with uh, one side uh, through a capacitor register something to change the phase angle of of the respective current between the respective currents. So, what we will do is this uh, let me first put say a transformer here. So, this is a transformer and let me supply this transformer like this. If you want to control the current or, uh, or the uh, voltage of this, okay, and finally, we have to control this voltage, the magnitude of this voltage. So, we may need to put some uh, resistance. You can put it here. You can also put it in the secondary side. Okay, so by controlling this resistance, also you can control this current and thereby this voltage. You can have a resistance here as well. So, in principle, both are okay. And here, this side, we will again let me take a transformer. Uh, but let me fit this through a cap variable capacitor register or some sort of impedance with which you can control the phase angle of this current and thereby the phase angle of the secondary voltage thereby this current and so this voltage. Okay. Okay, now, so this is, this can control the magnitude and phase angle between the V1 and V2, can control the angle between V1 and V2. Okay. So, we have to adjust this until and unless you get these two voltages V1 and V2 at 90 degree out of phase and same magnitude. So, this is the control, how you can control, how you can change uh, the angle. But the next question is, more important question, how do we know that uh, uh, we are at the uh, desired condition that we have obtained correct phase angle and correct magnitude. How do we test that? So, for that, so the way we will do it like this. So, let me tell you the entire procedure how to use it starting from the calibration. Okay. So, let me tell you the entire procedure in detail. 
So first step is to calibrate steps. So step one, calibrate this potentiometer, okay, call this PL, pot L, pot L, left potentiometer, calibrate pot L. How? So for that, we need a standard cell, this is standard cell, okay, so what we will do, uh, So let, let me uh, make several copies of this. So, step one is calibration of potentiometer one. For that, let me, so we do not need this unknown source right now. So, let me erase this unknown source. So what we have to do, we have to connect the standard cell so if we are taking this as the reference point. So let us connect the standard cell like this. Through a galvanometer. Okay and so first decide the suitable uh, length where you want to get the null so that is decided by the choice of uh, voltage per unit length that you uh, that and that in turn depends on the magnitude of the unknown voltage you should have an idea of the magnitude of the unknown voltage. So you decide, so decide the uh, voltage per unit length accordingly put the jockey call this J1 then put jockey J1 at, at a length, so from left, uh, this is now from the right side, okay. So put jockey at a length, call it L, such that, okay. So decide the volt, uh, if, if this is V volt per centimeter, per centimeter, say, then put the jockey at a length L centimeter such that V volt per centimeter multiplied by L centimeter is equal to the standard cell voltage VSTD. Okay, put it there and then adjust. Uh, say this resistance or this resistance call this one R1 R2 
adjust R1 or R2 or both to get null. Okay, that means the potentiometer one or potentiometer L is calibrated. Calib calibration is over. But of course, we need to record the value of this ammeter here. Okay, so record record the value of ammeter. A1, say this is equal to I1. Okay, so note this value and then the calibration of potentiometer 1 is done. Now, next step is calibration of potentiometer 2. We call it pot R. So, this is pot R. Right pot. Pot L, pot R. Okay. Now, for that, what we will do? And then we have this uh, meter A1, of course, and here we will put a new equipment. What is that? That is going to be a air core transformer. Important that this should be air core. Okay, so, I am not drawing any core. So, this is an air core transformer. Okay, and uh, so, if any current is flowing here, then we will have some voltage induced in the secondary. This voltage we will bring. and connect one side here, another side through the galvanometer, we will connect it here. This is movable. Okay. Now, uh, we, we, we need to know the mutual inductance of this, uh, this transformer or that means between these couple calls okay and now observe that uh, this this voltage in the secondary call this v uh, V m. This voltage in the secondary is at 90 degree with the current which is flowing here or here I2. Okay. V m must be 90 degree out of phase with I2. Why? Because what is Vm? Vm is nothing but d d. So it is m multi. It is proportional to m multiplied by d d t of I two. Okay. Or for AC, we can write this as uh, 
j omega m i 2 i 2 t and this is the r m s value. Okay. So, v m is 90 degree out of phase from this current. Okay. Now, this voltage v 2 v 2 is in phase with I 2 v 2 and I 2 are in same phase. Why? Because, because this, this wire is resistive. Okay. Since this circuit is resistive, so V 2 is nothing but I 2 multiplied by some resistance. So, V 2 and I 2 are in same phase and V m and I 2 are 90 degree out of phase. Now, these two facts together, what does it imply? V m and V 2, they will be 90 degree out of phase. Okay? So, this fact that V m is 90 degree out of phase from I 2, but I 2 is in same phase with V 2, this implies that V m is 90 degree out of phase with V 2. Okay. Now, if we can make V 2 90 degree out of phase from V 1, if we can make V 2 90 degree out of phase from V 1, then V m and V 1 will be in same phase, same or 180 degree out of phase. So, will be in phase. Okay because if we, if we can make V 2 90 degree from V 1, V 2 is 90 degree from V 1 and V m is 90 degree from V 2, that means V 1 and V m will be either in 0 degree or 180 degree. And then only we can get a balance here by moving this jockey. So, here actually we are bringing this V m to potentiometer 1 and measuring this V m using potentiometer 1 or potentiometer L. Okay? And we can get a balance or null only if we can make V 2 90 degree out of phase of V n. and then only we can get a balance of V m with potentiometer L. Okay. So, if we do not get any balance, if we fail to get any balance for any position of this jockey, that means V m is uh, that means V m is not in phase with V 1 which in turn will mean V 2 is not at 90 degree with V 1 and then we have to adjust uh, this this things this capacitance this resistance okay? so that V 2 is uh, 90 degree out of phase from V 1. So, let me write. So, if we fail to ba get balance, then we have to 
adjust this capacitor called that C C three R three C three and R three and once we adjust it so that we get a balance that ensures V two and V one are ninety degree of out of phase. Once we get balance above in the above procedure. then v1 and v2 are 90 degree out of phase as desired okay and also also if we know the value of m if we know the uh, so if we know the value of m then from vm we can estimate this current i2 if we know the value of vm then we can estimate the value of uh, this current i2 from vm and then from that we can estimate the value of v2 if we know the resistance of this van okay so uh, okay mm, now say if this is m then from the value of vm how can we get the value of i2 i2 is so let's write i2 is same as v or let's write it this way v m is equal to j omega m omega is known if m is also known we can write this j omega m multiplied by i2 okay and See, we want this total voltage V2 to be equal to V1. So, we want V2 equals V1 magnitude. Okay. So, and from here we can write that the magnitude of Vm is same as M omega magnitude of I2. And we can also write V2 is equal to R times I2, where R is the resistance of this potentiometer wire. Okay, so you can write V two is this. Okay, all, all all these are magnitudes. So then we can write. Uh, so this is what we want. V two is equal to V one. So in place of V two, uh, we write R I two from here. this is equal to v1 and in place of i2 let us write vm by m omega
So, V m, so V 1 will be V m multiplied by R times m omega. Okay. So, if we know this factor, so we need to know this factor. We need to know this factor or maybe the potentiometer manufacturer or the seller will give us this factor okay, for a particular value of omega. Then we, we know that for which length here, so for what value of this length uh, called this L what uh, call this x, I might have used L many a times, call this x this length. Okay. So, what will be the value of this x? Okay. So, we can write that, uh, so this, so we are getting V m, V m here and we want to get a balance. Okay. So, we want uh, to get a balance and to get the balance, to get the balance at length x, we need to satisfy v 1 by the total length l, this total length l multiplied by x is equal to v m. Okay. So, now, from this equation, we can write that, so these two equations will imply that V 1, this V 1 is equal to V m, now V m is same as this, okay, multiplied by R by m omega, this is known, now this two cancels. So, x will be L multiplied by m omega by r. Okay. So, what we have to do is, we have to put the jockey at this particular length x and adjust these values, these two values or you can also adjust this resistance to control the total current. Okay. Call this resistance call this R 1, R 2. Okay. So, x is obtained like this. Now, So, what we have to do is set the jockey at x equal to L m omega by r. Okay. This factor m omega by r should be known. So, set the jockey there and adjust what we can adjust? We can adjust C 3 R 3 R 2 adjust C 3 R 3 R 2 to get balance. Do not move the jockey at this point. Do not change anything on in the first potentiometer. Okay. Do not change R 1. Or, or this resistance, do not change anything or in one words, 
do not change this current i1 which is fixed in the first step do not change i1 this is most important once we get the balance the calibration of the second potentiometer is over that means we have made sure the voltage v2 is in same phase with, uh, out of phase from v1 and same magnitude like v1 so this is step 2 over now final step step 3 this is the measurement of unknown voltage okay so in this phase okay so in this phase we will still have this of course this is always there here also we'll have this although we'll, we are not using it so we can you can keep it open here also you are not use going to in this measurement phase we are not going to use it you can keep it open but okay and now we will connect the vx okay and we'll have two jockeys okay so do not change i1 and i2 that means do not change anything so this is r1 this is r2 c3 r3 okay so do not change any of this r1 r2 r3 or c3 do not change any of this move the position of j1 and j2 to find null and once we have the null then we can write that so at, at null we can write that vx is equal to uh, vx is how much uh, this this is so we can write uh, once again the kvl v so vx plus uh, vr minus vl is 0 vx plus vr vx vr v uh, minus vl is 0 implying vx is equal to vl minus vr and now vl and vr can be found from this two lengths okay so that's the process that's the total pro entire process okay so maybe i recap a bit v1 from here okay sorry vx from here is this okay so let me write j to be consistent j means root over minus 1 okay so um, now you can put this value here of for vl and vr so you'll get vx and we are done okay so let me just conclude this video by summarizing it in brief so what we have to do is first decide the per unit length voltage that we want to have then we have to set the standard connect the standard cell to the potentiometer keeping in mind the chosen value of voltage
per unit length find the null that is calibration of potentiometer 1. Then using the air core uh, transformer we have to calibrate the second potentiometer. Once again we have to first decide at which point the null should be obtained, put the jockey at that position, adjust the capacitance and resistance to change the phase angle and magnitude of the second potentiometer. Once we get the null, we are done. Phase 3, last phase, connect the unknown voltage across the two potentiometers together adjust the two jockeys do not change anything that can change the current in either potentiometer 1 or potentiometer 2. Change only the two jockeys find the null and from the lens get the voltage. So, uh, one small but important thing uh, which I forgot to mention before is why, why we use air core transformer here, why not uh, iron core uh, transformer. Okay. This is because in, in, in case of iron core transformer, the flux is not exactly in the same phase with the primary current there is a small delay which we call the hysteresis uh, uh, lag due to which the flux generated by this, pri this primary coil which is this I2 and the, so I2 and flux they will have a small lag between them. Therefore, this volt secondary voltage Vm will also not will not be exactly at 90 degree from the uh, current I2. Okay. But in case of AR core, there is no hysteresis lag and that is why this transformer must be AR core, that is important. Okay. Another small thing, you observe that the, that, uh, uh, the voltage induced in the secondary is the voltage here is Vm and at the null condition when there is no current in current in the secondary circuit then there is no voltage drop also in the secondary. So, therefore, the voltage that we are getting here is strictly Vm there is no uh, voltage drop at all in the secondary. This is also a nice thing, nice and obvious thing. So, uh, the voltage that we are measuring that or that is coming here is exactly 90 degree out of phase from the uh, from the uh, this uh, current I2. Okay. So, this is also important. So, since we are dealing with the subject of measurement where accuracy is very crucial important this minute things must be must be uh, uh, remembered that we should not use a iron code transformer here okay thank you